<laughs> Greetings, everyone. Welcome to uh, the decoding slash review slash discussion of um, 1975. Man Friday. Um, I can't recall the director, but um, getting started, I, I, I thought this film was a um, epic example of um, racism, white supremacy, kind of covered all of the areas as well. And um, just, I just wanna play this short, short clip to get us, and just as a quick example of how fast and um, how fast this, this film displays it, its um, racism, white supremacy. Have dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I think that's quite possible, though. Yes, I think that could be done. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and um, the, the, the tragedy of those lines is that white people have, have done just that. They have um, dominated everything on the planet so far. Every area of the world has, in some way, shape, or form, being controlled, manipulated by a racist man, racist woman. So um, that this opening scene just let me know that I was in for a really, really sweet racist treat. And that being said, I'll let others chime in. I'll have some comments. Man, <laughs> this, I watched it twice, one, but it's just so crazy when the, the opening scene that you were playing that is just the whole idea of the European mind wanting to take power and be God and just putting it in comparison to because in the beginning, it almost like sets the setting for the entire film. Um, but I think the part that really stood out was the religious part of the beginning and how it almost like it almost just in my head as I was as I was decoding it um reminded me of like the day we live right now the second like no different maybe just a little bit like covered up but not even. So I think um, that's just like my opening comment, but I do have very specific comments too for specific scenes, but just like overall, this first, like first literally one minute, <laughs> just cover the entire film for me, just like set that setting of what we're gonna be discussing today. Thank you. And the director is uh, Jack Gold. Uh, I would not be I would not be looking at the chat that much. So if you have comments, please um, be vocal about them, um, if you can. So um, I thought um, just the overall. We don't have to go in order of the film, by the way. But um, this film is um, has Dr. Francis Kessbolson and um, Yurugu and the Electable Negro. And pretty much, I'm pretty sure every other um, book written about um, counter racism and racism, white supremacy, what it is, and, and how it works. Because throughout the film, we um, we see uh, how um, Robinson Crusoe has um, settled on the island. He he's he's made um, a lot of um, stuff uh, compared to the um, non-white people in this film he is very 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 advanced even on um on an island where he has made a a, a home and has um various contraptions so um that reminded me of uh the urugu and how um technology is um what white people um need to um feel comfortable um what they need to uh, have their sense of um control and even in um, this um, this island, uh, he would, he managed to uh, fulfill that aspect of his Urugu, which I thought was very very interesting. Um, another um, electable Negro moment and just racist uh, reality of the film is that 
it took um, about 28 minutes of runtime before um, Friday gets um, closed, gets anything other than that little lion cloth skirt thing he was wearing, which I thought was very suspect and very uh, racist. And um, yeah, just, just having the, the black male's body on display for a majority of the movie was really, really suspect to me. And I think um, one of the, um, what is this movie about? I think it's about um, a, uh, a relationship between a parasite and a host. I think um, the parasite is Robinson Crusoe and uh, the host is um, Friday and everything not white basically because um, we, began to see a dynamic unfold eventually that um, represents Robinson Crusoe unable to um, live without its host. A, a parasite cannot live without its host. That's um, when um, they're finally um, separated. Robinson Crusoe um, just chooses to um, kill himself rather than um, live as a parasite with no host, with nothing to feed off of, with no source of energy. I thought that was really telling as well. Are there others who had um, things to share? Yeah, um, in the beginning when Friday and his fellow um, associates came on the island and he saw them, Except for just trying to figure out to see who they were, he already, you know, labeled them as savages. I guess, you know, his fear is what he was working on and just killed them. I felt like Friday was very smart to tie himself so that he wouldn't get killed. But just for, as usual, the white men, they don't ask you what your name is. They kind of just name everything. So for him to just name him Friday because he discovered him that day was, was just, you know, expected. And to just have him call him master was, was just like typical. Um, the comment as well on some of what 05 was saying, uh, spe specifically about the parasite. Uh, it, rem it reminded me of the uh, scene where Friday was kind of like running away after, um, I don't want to call that guy master. What's his name? Hero Tool. <laughs> uh, when he put him in that hole. When he put him in that hole and then Friday was kind of like running off and just kind of like how scared he became. And he he honestly resembled a child to me, like a big child, a big that was a faith alone that, that couldn't that knew that without Friday couldn't achieve anything or get anything done. Uh, one thing that I definitely saw throughout this movie that was so apparent to me was like the aspects of Urugu that we read about. And that was just kind of screaming at throughout the entire film, especially when um, the concept of mine and, and what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine. I thought that, that was very interesting. And it was it kind of like, it, it's like, Urugu animated almost you know like they have no concept of mine you know he, he, Friday Friday puts this on you know it's like it's for everybody right you know but it, the the idea that you know that this thing only belongs to me and it's only for me isn't something that exists it is it's it doesn't exist to them so I thought that that was very interesting as well um that's it for my comment Hello, can I be heard? Yes, ma'am. Hi, the movie was written by Adrian Mitchell, white man. Music by Carl Davis, white man. Um, this movie is proof that white people are not ignorant. When Robeson Cusso shot the other um, Friday's friends, um, that reminded me of a nearly 
fuller junior moment you know when he says like don't run because you know you'll you'll get shot in the back <laughs> so yeah that that remind me of that that's all for now mr ray was a zero uh yes i had three points that i wanted to make the first one uh kwaku was talking about when robertson crusoe uh, put Friday inside the hole and Friday said that I'm afraid but after that and just for me it seemed as if that was one um, minute instance and in when the non-white person was um, less confused and the white person was more confused because <clears throat> afterwards he was looking for Friday and Friday was blending in with the jungle. Friday was blending in with the darkness. He was less confused in that situation. So uh, non-white people should take instances like that and use it to their advantage. Uh, Johnson had brought up the point uh, when Friday had tied himself, his wrists with the vines. And it seems as if a large number of black males do things uh, consciously and subconsciously to not appear to be a threat to the white supremacists. Uh, that was interesting. And O5, you had made uh, the mention of host. And in the movie, after uh, the white supremacists that killed the other three black males that Friday was with, and uh, they were digging the graves. Uh, uh, Friday had made a reference to they die like mosquitoes, and we have to be cunning like mosquitoes. So that, that was interesting. And also, I wanted to add uh, when they were digging the graves, Friday got into the grave uh, to be subconscious, knowing that uh, interacting with white persons is enough in depth. Uh, oh yes um it was a lot of necrophilia in that scene and when uh robinson crusoe he made the reference to cleaning up the mess and the camera went to the three black males that he had just killed and that reminded me of a past cows broadcast where Mr. Fuller said that the white supremacists don't want to deal with live black people, much less the dead ones. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, that's it for now. Wow, many, um, many great points um, from everyone who's uh, shared so far. I think, um, that, yeah, just, just to get it out of the way, the, the movie um, Robinson Crusoe's Diction is really is very very racist. He refers to the the, the non-white black people as um, savages um, throughout the film, and um, he also has this racist, um, paranoid um, idea that he may be um, eaten by one of the um, people black people he calls um savages throughout the movie he, he also refers to them as um cannibals and um he's fearful of being being eight um which is really interesting because if, if a person is, is, is an understanding of um history then um white people have have participated in a lot more cannibalism than um non-white people for sure and um i think they're the writers are um really really um refined white supremacists because um how this film was made how the friday character was um made they were able to uh, give um black people who may watch this movie like a a somewhat constructive black male um character to to root for and to um learn from but throughout the movie um due to the plot he's also forced to um behave like a like a child like someone really um like um just a child to say the least and i think that was done to um reinforce that image that um black people are children black people are really um unknowing of um, white people what they're up to what they're about um, and the system that they have created, what what that is about, and how that works. 
So it's a way for like the um, writers to, to to get away with having a black male um, behave as Friday does because he has a really constructive reason for doing it, you know, for wanting to be um, cunning. And um, but the way it was presented it was, it was still very very racist to me. And then, and um, I, I I would be um, not surprised at all if a lot of white people are watching this and either forgot or don't really care that um, Friday is acting like a child, they they see that behavior and they um, correlate and relate that behavior to, to all black people. And um, it's uh, it's really interesting because in the system of white supremacy, um, um, black people, non-white people, um, at least in the beginning, maybe even now, we were very, um, unknowing of what white people like were what they were about and what they were up to which is why they've been able to dominate the entire planet um because of because we've allowed them to to do so because huh, yeah and i think um naming him friday may be um more refined coded racism because Jesus, so-called Jesus Christ was killed on a Friday, Good Friday. Um, this movie is a uh, movie about a black male who becomes in the eyes of Robinson Crusade, good, a good slave, Good Friday. So it's really interesting how um, insidious and how um, well hidden the racism is in this film, to, to say the least. And um, I, I have for a long time, I didn't know the, the, I think the Robinson Crusoe's name, I think it was probably mentioned uh, once or twice in the film. So for a long time, I just thought like um, that his name was Master. I didn't even know he had a, had a real name. And, and, and that could be um, another racist attack on the Black people who are watching this, having to refer to this white person as Master throughout the entire film. Um, yeah, the so I just wrote down like a bunch of um, racist things I I I I, I can recall um, um, brute uh, brute strength. Um, Robinson Crusoe said that um, Friday had um, brute strength. Um, also said he had um, heathen magic. Um, what else? Oh, where the devil have you got the devil like asking where like where did the because like ever never forget the first scene with a black person when where the black person appears with, with with the shield and and the and the spear he's like oh oh god why did you bring me this this devil please bring me an angel or or jesus or something and then um um when they get to their um to Robinson Crusoe's dwelling, he's like no monkey tricks, and then he he called he refers to him as as a, as a devil as well when they get there. He also when he started the fire, he said, "This is white magic." <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, no, he said science is white magic. Um, science is what it's a white magic. I remember. And, and um. Uh, I want to just jump uh, ahead to um to the the scene where um Friday is role playing as master and um master is is, is role playing as as God and then um a lot of stuff happens there but um Friday is like um you know I'm, I am um I I'm a man I I can offer you love. You know, I can, and then um, Robinson Crusoe was like, Friday, what you've offered me is a is a poisonous gift. So I'm like, dang. And he's like, man sh shall not love man. And I'm under the impression that Friday was not talking about um, sex or nothing like that. He was just talking about uh, giving, um, <laughs> giving um, Robinson Crusoe some like, some sort of, um, love that, that that does not equal sex or whatever but um Robertson Crusoe saw that as um him like 
propositioning um, sex to him, which is what he called a, a poisonous gift. And I thought that was a really, really uh, brilliant, um, delectable Negro roasting moment. Um, and just how that all played out. Are there any, um, anything else other folks wanted to share before I continue? I would like to, yeah. okay, go ahead. I could <laughs> hop in here. Um, yeah, just starting off from the beginning as well. I know someone already mentioned it, but just how Friday tied himself up just really showed. Like I don't, I want to, I don't want to use the word intelligent, but almost like he knew, you know, like he he knew, like oh, let me tie myself up to live. So that almost like showed who Friday was as a person, and just also showing like. These people aren't quote unquote stupid, you know. And then also, um, O5, you didn't mention the fact about clothing. And I'm not sure, like, complete, like, 100%, but I'm pretty sure, like, that's part of, like, their tribe clothing as well. And then also, when he was given clothing, it was almost like, um, well, we have to wash you clean. So now you are provided the clothing of, like, European clothing. So I think, too, like the whole idea of nakedness is very, like, it's almost like natural in those cultures. But also thinking about like European cultures, the only culture is like, oh, you need to put clothes on. You can't be naked. You can't sew your skin. Like, we always have to be covered up. And if you're naked, you're like um, labeled some other things like, oh, um, I was like prostitute rewards. But I think it's very interesting, the clothing scene. And then also going into like once Friday was captured, um, he it almost turned he almost had to turn into like a baby or childlike in order to survive. Because if he was smart or showed like, hey, I know these things or oh, I can do all these things, then he's like, oh, now I have to compete with you. And that also lead me to competition in the scene where they did like the mini Olympics, um, the swimming test, the soccer, and all these things and. <laughs> Friday just like won all of those and there he's like well I'm still the winner or you're equal to me and then he also said too like during the their soccer match um I'm 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 doing strategy my strategy is to tire you out and then I can score basically on you which I thought stood out and then also Moving into the um, indiv individual scene, where it's like European culture is like individualism, like individualistic. This, this is mine and only mine. And then a Friday comes in and says, hey, this belongs to the community. This belongs to everybody um, within the tribe. So that was the part that really stood out too, is just really thinking about like African tribes and the word community, and then thinking about European and um, individualism or individualistic and then also the scene where he talks about oh my god has sent me a message for you friday and he's like jesus wants me to wash away your sins and like wash you clean and like baptize you in the ocean all these things it's almost like saying like hey you're dirty basically that's what it's saying like you're dirty you're sinful you're unclean you're savages as we all mentioned and then only the only way for you to become clean is for me to wash you of like your sins and then sorry i have oh i put the the sex scene or the the dream about the sex scene was very interesting and then friday kept asking so why is your god angry like why is your god angry that you had a dream about women and i think that whole scene again goes back to like placing like being naked or showing skin as something sinful having um, sexual intercourse something sinful having doing all these things that are like considered sins within like the christian religion and it's almost but it's like why though if the creator made us like this why is it sinful and then also like the last scene that really stood out was the children of the tribe when they, he wanted like, well, the white men wanted to get into the tribe, like, hey, send me into your tribe. And then they mentioned like, oh, I can teach your, your children here everything. And then Friday made a, a comment like, but without the children of the tribe, 
I mean, without the children, the tribe doesn't exist. And it kind of came up to me, like thinking about strategy, like bringing it forth like today. It's like without the children here in society, like no progress or not even the word progress, excuse me, no um, like change or replacement of a system of justice will even occur if we don't have the children in place, our children on board. And I think too, like at the end when he killed himself, the white man killed himself, it shows like, hey, now I don't have dominion over anybody or control or power. So now I have to kill myself because that's in nature. So I think that really stood out. Um, that was like most of my notes here, but I'll jump in as well. But um, please share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah I agree with what you said, uh, Nanaya, about the nakedness. I felt like I thought it was interesting that like the opening shot is like him on the beach with fur. Like I think Helen put it in the comments. I think it's supposed to show like how absurd he looks and how like European people are ashamed of their bodies. And even in this like, obviously what seems to be like a tropical climate, he's like wearing fur and his body is like completely covered, which I thought was interesting. I mean, maybe it has to do with mosquitoes or something, but for me, it just seemed like to show that like he was ashamed. I felt like the movie did a good job of showing how like absurd and almost like illogical um, European, like the European Asili is to just like how actual, how actual groups of people could function. I felt like every part just perfectly encapsulated. I, I, I agree with uh, what Kwaku said. It really felt like, like every scene was like a chapter from Yurugu like the sports part when he's effort, like you could, it just shows how Europeans constantly contradict himself. Like when he's saying, oh, like sports is just about how you do it. It's not about winning. And then like, he sees that um, Friday let him win. And he's like, no, you, you didn't let me, you shouldn't have let me win. It's not, and then he's like, but I thought it wasn't about winning. And they're like constantly changing like their ideas because they want to always mask the actual truth because the sport is about winning, but they want to mask it in some like fake morality or uh, no, I don't think it sounds less, um, something that sounds more noble than it actually is. And my one of my favorite parts was when Friday kind of tells him like, I don't want to be a slave anymore. And he's like, okay, fine. You'll be a wage laborer. <laughs> and then he's like giving him coins and he's like, you can use these coins to buy things. And he's like, he's like, but I already use these things. Why do I need to buy them? He's like, so you can have them. But I mean, I, and I, I thought throughout the movie, Friday was pretty, I would call him intelligent personally. I thought he was like the moment when he puts that handcuffs on, I, I would, or like he puts the thing on to pretend like he's handcuffed. I thought that was an incredibly smart because he's aware that this person is shooting these other people like shooting other people because out of fear and a fear of being like, I don't know, emasculated or killed. And so he's like, hey, I'm a victim. Like, I don't know these people, et cetera. I thought that was pretty clever. And I thought his whole strategy of like getting the, um, like getting the house that he made so that he could, his gun, I thought that was really clever too. So I don't know. I, I thought throughout the movie Friday was pretty smart. I feel like the movie is probably panned so much because it takes a really like beloved character in like American or not American but like white lore and turns him into like what he really would be and I don't think that a lot of people liked that yeah I thought um the race scene was ex extremely brilliant and um um I thought um Crusoe saying that um a sport is a war something along the lines it's like a war without armies and um battles without bloodshed i'm like dang white people white people are not ignorant because i i i wonder how many uh white people well how many less intelligent white people just understand sports in such a different way than non-white people understand sports because i didn't know sports um meant um war can be decoded as uh, as a war practice as a war games basically until reading um, the isis papers chapter five i believe so that was incredible and also uh, i i think you're entirely correct 
about this movie being um panned because um it it just it very very constructive and teaches so much about racism and white supremacy if, if uh, a person knows what they're looking at and um the part with um Friday um um pretending to be a a, a um a victim um of his um associates was was very um um intelligent and uh, constructive and also um an example of like the white savior because um now Crusoe is able to um be the the white savior to this um poor poor savage as, as he would um like to think but uh it's just um friday trying to trying to survive i think this movie um did a a black excellent job at um like showing um friday um do the code switching do the pretending to be a, a a silly person while not actually being silly but then again it, that can be lost on a lot of people who can watch the film and forget that friday is acting or forget he's doing this to survive and they just may see him as being like a, a child so still still um, still dangerous um racist propaganda um mr ray one five zero share uh yes one thing that stuck out to me about this movie is as long as the white supremacists can use the bible to justify white supremacy they will um another thing that stuck out to me was uh the emphasis on the flag and while mr fuller came with the concept of the compensatory pledge which is um I do at all times identify with the flag in the exact same manner that the flag identifies with me. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, it was interesting how Robinson Crusoe's character told Friday not to laugh at England and how the white supremacists understand that there's truth, a small bit of truth in each joke. So they don't want anyone to hit the ground running with joking with anything about them um another scene in the movie uh robertson crusoe was tearing up at the sky at night and he was saying that the stars are made of cold meaning ice meaning white so uh, that was interesting uh we were discussing them in the ball game and how it was interesting that Friday said that his plan was to wear Robinson Crusoe's character out. Uh, not to mention they're playing soccer, um, black and white ball, Welsing moment. And even bigger Welsing moment is when they had Friday with the big brown ball in his mouth running. Uh, that was very interesting. Um, also with that scene and how it relates today, I see victory to blacks, and I think we can all see that with the young lady on the uh, U.S. track team and what she's been through. Um, did anyone have any thoughts about the line from the movie? Uh, Friday was singing a war without fighting, a battle without hurting. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, definitely a boasting moment. Um, the the entire sports scene. Um, freaking uh, what else? Oh, um, the the part where uh, Crusoe begins to um, so called educate um, Friday, and he, he he begins that by saying, "I'm gonna um, now we're gonna do something 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 along the lines." Like we're gonna do something about that black ignorance and superstition, and it's just like um, real, really telling of um how white people see black people and um how, how they see their see their minds. Um, I thought yeah, I thought the, the the words in this movie were really interesting. Um, scarlet, like uh, we're gonna get to we're gonna so white skin, white skin, like scarlet, like yeah. his white skin. Yeah, um, but the Scarlet would be the, 
the the when white people get red, you can see like um you can see them, you can see that I don't know if it's the blood, I don't know what it is that, that we're seeing that's red. But yeah, like um scarlet, brilliant in color. Well scarlet is um it, it, I didn't even know what it meant. I thought it was I, I assumed it was a color, but the definition says scarlet, um brilliant red color is what the definition of it. So um very interesting that um, the devil is supposed to be um, like I, I think red as well something like that and they um, and he caused Crusoe causes caused the black people devil throughout the film so that may be some sort some sort of um, projection going on oh and I thought that was, this is really telling um, in the beginning of the film where Crusoe is killing um, the black males he. Before he shoots, he says, in the name of the father, and then he shoots the black male. And I'm like, the religion of white supremacy right there, you know, just it's, uh, it's it can't be more in your face than that, I think, you know. Right. Say again. Justifiable homicide. Yep. Um, oh, yep. And then um, when I don't know, and, uh, I, um, Crusoe says, I think you're very dangerous. Perhaps you're an agent of the devil. Well, an agent to the devil. <laughs> um, I, freak, I I don't know. Uh, I think that was just more of Crusoe's racist paranoia. Um, but that happened like um, around the education scene. So um, I don't know if um, he thought Friday was getting too smart, but um, that was also a very interesting line. Um, but, uh, I have some comments. Go um, ahead. So, my my first comment was about like the wage the wage labor, and I I, I remember I remember just thinking to myself, man, this. This Urugu really does not want to work. You know, uh, I thought it was um, Friday, you know, had been putting up for it with it for a while. He was doing all of it and he realized, you know, I want to share the work. I, I don't want to do all this work because at this point, I think um, Friday still believes that him and uh, Cru uh, Crusoe are somewhat equals um, because I don't think he fully understands the concept of, you know, uh, the white supremacy that Crusoe is participating in but you know it Crusoe went as far as to to give him wages you know I, and I don't know if, if really the the Urugu doesn't want to work for himself or he doesn't want to like work at, for Friday um but I really did not want to work and I think that just kind of goes to show the uh the the because oftentimes you know there's the idea he even said in the film like he he uses his brain to work and a lot of the time these racists will say you know they employed uh, employed black people non-white people because they're more skilled laborers and that left um the white people to think and come up with these these uh these con ideas i guess but then you know toward the end when uh, Friday manages to buy his hut, everything in it, like quickly he was able to put together that that uh, raft so they can get off the island. I think really shows like uh, <laughs> that that's not actually true, you know, especially when it comes to maybe even helping non-white people, like white people use the drag their feet, you know. Um, I don't know if if this white man ever wanted to go back to Friday's island, or if he just wanted to stay on that island forever and have Friday work for him, I suspect the latter. So he was definitely dragging his feet. And Friday almost said, "Like you're playing around, you know, you're playing. You're not accomplishing anything. You're you're in here playing while I'm doing all the work." Uh, so I thought that that was very interesting. Also, um, with with his name, he uh, he only revealed his name to me. I think uh, was only once when those other white those other white Urugus came and like were asked uh like you know he they came to the island and then he thought he was being rescued right so that was the only time that he revealed his name i think throughout the whole movie 
in my opinion. Um, there's something else too that I had wanted to mention. Give me a second, let me see if it comes back to my head, my mind. Um, Oh, the, the God. Um, so I, like throughout the movie, you know, there's this whole religion. The religion is just spewing out t super, uh, super racist religion. And even like Friday, like Friday, even, you know, uh, Robert Crusoe or whatever is like kind of asking him about his about his gods. And Friday goes on to comment like your God is so fearful. Your, your God like hates you guys. And it just got me thinking like, so it's like the religion of racism and white supremacy ultimately wants non-white people to fear white people. And I think that's like, that's the whole goal of this is to just be so afraid and so paralyzed by, by the fear of being uh, punished. <laughs> Cause that was another concept that Friday didn't know, didn't know what that was. He had to ask what, what does punishment mean? So I think, that that also goes to show that um that you know the 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 god that the Yorugus worship is one that is based purely off of fear, uh, and also throughout the movie, I think uh, it kind of shows how you know at one point in time religion was really like a a really like motivating and strong force, and it still is, but I think. It's no longer Christianity. I think it's a uh, science has replaced Christianity in today's modern times, um, and the system has refined itself to use science now as you know the basis of the mistreatment uh, carried out on the planet. No longer through Christianity. Uh, that's all I have for now. Very well said, Miss um, Johnson, and then Miss Mr. Ray One Five Zero. Um, I wanted to talk about the part where, you know, um, what's his name, Robert Crusoe, is telling... Ro Robinson Crusoe. Friday, okay, Robinson Crusoe was um, asking Friday about his God, if he said he see God in everything, the trees, the banana, you know, basically all the things that God created, he's super appreciative of those things. And Friday asked him, what do your God look like? And he was like, if anything, God looks like um, the image of me, you know, a white male. It brought back a nearly fuller moment where, you know, white supremacy is the biggest religion. You know, they, they're, they're, they're their own white gods to themselves. Um, <laughs> I'm forgetting. Um, when Friday went to office and he said because he didn't want to work for labor and I guess um, Robin Crusoe threatened him and he was like, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me in my spirit, which is, you know, aim for the third eye, sort of speak. Um, I'm blanking, but... <laughs> Um, it seemed like Friday was very smart to play it out as far as when they said, oh, it seemed like you were teaching him things to his tribe. And he was like, but he didn't learn anything. So it's like, regardless of how you try to make white people see like sorrow day, and they did the whole sorrow day it's kind of like they're set in their own ways so it's like you can't teach them anything due to the fear that they carry of this is why we have the system we kind of have basically thank you miss johnson mr ray yes um when he began to compensate him with the gold coins, that made me think about Dr. Wilson and her theory on paper money and gold. Um, 
And after that scene, it cut back to when Friday was with his tribe and the elder uh, black female said that she didn't believe a word that he was saying. And it was interesting, Friday replied by saying, all true stories are absurd. Um, and then it goes back to Friday and the white supremacists, and it made me think of how the monetary system as a whole is just a rat race. Um, it was interesting to me also how they had uh, Robinson Crusoe's character studying the stars, but he only uh, started studying those stars after Friday said that he knew how to get back to his tribe by navigating the stars. So that was interesting um, how the white supremacists can learn something from their victims and use that to further practice white supremacy against them. Uh, case in point, at the end of the movie, when the white supremacist ended his existence, he did it in the exact same spot as Ms. Johnson was saying, uh, where he learned inadvertently from Friday where the soul resides. So um, he couldn't practice white supremacy the way he wanted to. So I'll use one last thing that I learned from this nigger and use it, you know, against him again. So that was very interesting. Um, oh, yes, uh, the scene where uh, Friday and Robinson Crusoe were talking and the white supremacist said, you're trying to make me lose my temper. And I thought to myself, no, he's attempting to make you lose the will and the ability to practice racism, white supremacy. Uh, Robinson Crusoe's character said that English songs were made by Riff Raff. And I, uh, excuse me, Friday replied, everyone on my island makes songs, so we're all Riff Raff. And that's interesting because today's time, there is a white rapper that goes by the name of Riff Raff, and he's doing a magnificent job of confusing victims. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll stop for then. That, like, thanks for all the uh, really interesting insight on um, after the code. Um, we call this film. Um, I thought the the dancing scene was also very a, a Yorugu moment uh, because we must remember that um, 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 white people they um, they separated themselves from their um, first they separated themselves from the, um, the world like they objectified everything they made everything something um, that they could name and control and then they separated. Um, their minds from their body and the body from the mind. And then, then they probably separated each limb from each other, each part of the brain from each other. Everything has been separated and split in order for it to be um, objectified. And I think that shows in the way that Robinson Crusoe was dancing because he was only able to move um, certain, he wasn't able to, to use his body, it seems, in, in unison. And that may be a result of the, the Plato conditioning of um, having to separate um, oneself from everything in order to um, do what needs to be done to practice white supremacy racism. Because when you're practicing white supremacy racism, you're going to be doing a lot of killing, a lot of maiming, and a lot of deceitful things. So maybe if one's body is totally um, in sync and functioning as a whole, then it's much harder to 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 do what needs to, to be done um, in order to practice white supremacy. But if everything's been separated, if you've been like everything's been split, uh, it's much easier, I suspect, to um, to do what needs to be done. So I, th I thought that 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 dancing scene was really telling on what um, white supremacy has done to uh, white people and their inability to see um, themselves as a full person with a body that works in unison. Uh, but um, I may be in error. And I, I want to play, um, I'm just going to play this scene because this scene is uh, so
so much to the code here, but it's a, a Welsing moment, Yoruba moment, and uh, just uh, man. Man is a uh, is white is a white person is a white person who practices racism white supremacy, and uh, so I thought this scene was um, epic to say the least. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and give it a watch. I am this far. If you take away my thoughts, I am this far. If you take away my thoughts. Remember, the only man in this film is Robinson Crusoe's character under the system of white supremacy. Scarlet King, uh, white, a white man with power in love with the um, the very things they've been conditioned to to mistreat um, black people in love with darkness and love with melanin and love with black people and love with what they can never attain, perhaps. Uh, really interesting. Scarlet Monster, the, the Scarlet Monster that has made us all monsters and monstrosities due to their insanity and their practice. Uh, racism and white supremacy and love of darkness and love of melanin and love of everything black which is why they copy mostly everything black people do um, really interesting it's necessary for a monster to hide himself hide himself away hide himself but amongst those vile kings called men there are some who can bear a little light uh, but some of us can take the pain of that light. There are a few of us, only a few, to whom God has scattered a few grains of light. And we, my poor savage, are the leaders of men. Yes, I am one of those leaders. White people leaving Europe to go out and dominate the, the few white people who had the will and um, ability to go out and kill, maim, pillage, rape, dominate in order to expand and refine white supremacy, a few few grains of light, small minority white people are a small minority on this planet. So no matter how many, um, no matter how big the planet is, there will always be uh, very, very few white people compared to the people who are not white. So very interesting. And, and, and I think this is correct. I think there was a very small number of white people who went out and began um, conquering through deceit, direct violence, and um, other destruction. And um, the explorers, the settlers, the pilgrims, all those, those concepts are white people going out to practice white supremacy. Responsible for those who are less kingly, less monstrous, and a vile king, a vile king, because because I use my will. It reminds me of um, uh, how he says that white people only bow down to other white people who are more monstrous than them. It reminds me of Vlad the Impeller, um, a very powerful white supremacist from the back in the day times, who um, who definitely vile vile monster definitely did really incorrect um disgusting things to um people and he was um still celebrated still had um people under his 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 domain and, and that's because uh this is how race and white supremacy works the, the more brutal you can be um the more power you can um obtain and keep so it's really interesting go ahead um mr ray one plus zero Yes, I just want to say really quick, they even celebrate um, 
you know, their idols on the screen, you know, like Jason, Michael Myers, uh, Freddy Krueger. Mm. Uh, they celebrate death all around. Mm, exactly. Columbus Day. Yep. Yeah. It. <laughs> yep. Hitler, there's been so many uh, racist codes created around um, Hitler. Even the, I, I have to be suspect whenever I see the numbers 88, because that, that means hell, hell Hitler, you know, 420, Hitler's birthday, you know, and all this stuff is celebrated um, and, 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 and hidden in plain sight. So this is, this is why it's our job to be able to decode what these, what the racist man and racist woman are saying, doing, and what they're up to. Again, the white shame. Um, do not flaunt my body because I know that it is scarlet and monstrous. It is white, it is feeble, it is a genetic mutation that should not be on earth but here i am and all the the, the he's listing um all these items all those items are, are used to to dominate to go out and conquer and dominate a urugu compensates for their um hating of their skin by creating um inventions and contractions that give them um, power give them some sense of control because the one thing they cannot control have never been able to control is their genetic deficiencies of having that um their um white skin tone i take what i keep you know white people have a hard time giving up anything they've acquired under the system of white supremacy um you know white it's really it's real like south africa to say at least i try to say the concept of south africa to say at least Mm. Rooted in money and shame. And um the ISIS paper just just tells us, informs us that um money has been used historically to compensate for uh, white people's skin tone. It's sort of used as, as a as a covering of their skin. And um just this movie is I just gotta give an applaud for this movie for being uh, I, I don't know what the writers are trying to do, if they're just trying to be truthful or they're trying to like rally the white people, or I don't know what they're trying to accomplish here, but uh, I know victims um, can definitely learn a lot from this, this from this scene alone. Um, but I'm gonna let it continue. But rooted in money, <laughs> money and shame, the shame with their skin tone, being born white, um, being um, born white due to the shameful act of two white people having sex and, and making more white um, mutants, genetic mutants, albino mutants. So. The vile king of the vile earth. Because I came to save you from your monstrosity by showing you how dark you are and how monstrous. Because I am scarlet and monstrously white. Because I am. Because I have a gun. I have you. Because I have a gun. The one tool, the only tool that has allowed racist man, racist woman to go out in ancient times and to go from um, land to land and just produce a, 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 a path of death and destruction that the universe um, had not yet seen before. And um, that's funny that um, the technology of the gun in this film is um, definitely um, presented in a way where it's like um, it's meant to be very uh, terrifying and um, uh, intimidating to see a, a, a person with an instrument like, like a gun. But that reality is even more um, prominent 
and um the Robinson Crusoe movie titled uh, Robinson Crusoe where it's same same concept he, he meets um uh, a black male um he names him Friday but he meets when he meets that black male um the Friday literally um bows down to the power of the gun bows down to the um, phallic symbol of the gun um so, and and he he says because I have a gun like three times in this speech because a gun is such a important powerful tool that white people have have used to um, dominate because it, it grants white people that cowardly ability to kill at a dis a, at a distance you know and and something like that is. Um, does a lot to terrorize a people who are unfamiliar with a with anything that can produce death with such with, with such a uh, efficiency. But that's what um the gun has done. It has had a lot of white people to kill with efficiency, to dominate, intimidate, and take whatever they whatever they want because a gun is the great equalizer um, for white people. It has allowed them to not hate their skin so much because they have the gun they have replaced their um penises they have replaced the white penis with the with the brown with the brown and black gun um, son of a gun um, all that that saying means that i have replaced my penis my white um, penis that i i am so shameful of and that i despise so much I'm replacing it with this pistol, this revolver, this musket, and um, by doing so, I, I now have the I, I now have the earth, I have the world, and he he calls the the earth in this speech um, the vile earth, but the earth is only vile because white people are are here and they made it such so vile. But before their um, meddlings and creating nukes and um, all types of armaments. Uh, I don't think the earth was was vile. I thought it, I, I suspect it was quite pleasant before all these tools of destruction were created by white people. Um, so was it, maybe folks, other folks got some things that they got out of this speech that I may have missed that they want to share. Um, um. You know, white people, oh, go ahead. Have you heard, uh, uh, I know I'm driving right now, but uh, sound okay? Not, it's not the best quality. It's not the best uh, quality, Kwaku. Hello? Yeah, much better. Um, so really quickly, uh, something that I found interesting was kind of kind of towards the end when Friday went was you know telling his stories, and it seemed like he was at the same time while he was kind of tricking the guy into like thinking that he was teaching him something that Friday was also saying I was trying to teach him. And re that's really when like the Yurugu moment, like, you know, that question that keeps coming up uh, every so often at like our meetings, like, what are you gonna do with all the white people? You know, the white people that, you know, if you know that white people cannot change, what do you do with them? And that kind of came, that kind of came to light in one of the scenes when uh, Friday was just talking about how, you know, he tried to, he tried to use their magic on him, but he could, the man could not change. Uh, and, so that kind of, that like reminded me of that moment. It's like, so what do you do? And one thing that I really realized was like the weaponization of white tears that was that, you know, Friday throughout the movie, I think once or twice until the very last scene when uh, Robinson Crusoe started crying, but he had been falling for it before. But then, you know, that last scene, he was, he didn't, he didn't cry. He didn't break a tear. It, it, he was just like, like, it is what it is. Very codified. You know, I understand now that if I let you come into our into our community, if I let you come in to teach our children and w especially that scene when he's when he's like 
when Robinson Crusoe was talking about teaching the children, I don't know if you guys caught it, but he said, like, I can't let this man make threats like that. Like, that, I thought that that was very, like, interesting, very codified, like, to realize, like, even though this, this man is trying to be somewhat sincere and he thinks he's doing a good thing, no, I, I'm not going to fall for it again. That, that's, a, that's a threat. <laughs> uh you're you're going to come here and teach our children the fear of god your and your ways you know um I, i'm not falling for it again the white teachers no longer work on me um so i thought that that was very interesting that was kind of like uh that was something that i wanted to highlight he also well called him a plague he is the plague yep um he was referred to as a plague and as the sickness, sickness itself, and I remind something remnant of what um, Arwa Koi, uh, I can't pronounce the name, but um, but that really black Skeleton scholar had written about these um about the the Yorubu. and um, yeah, I really um thought it was interesting that um once the racist man could no longer practice racism in a way that he wanted, like Ray mentioned earlier, um. He killed himself. Uh, is that is that the feeling that white people get when they can no longer practice racism? When they feel that their um, material comfort and material chickens are 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 being taken away from them because of because it's racist and should not have been theirs in the first place. Uh, if they want to, if if suicide is um, how they would like to, um, if they if they want to commit mass suicide because racism cannot be practiced, then I think that would be way more constructive than them um, using all their um, tools of destruction to kill as many uh, non-white people as possible, and in hopes of maintaining white supremacy. Uh, like I think it, that's more of a possibility them using all their guns and um, weapons, grenades to just kill as many non-white people as possible until they can practice racism again. Um, but yeah, it was pleasant to see a, a racist suspect um, do something constructive for once, which is take their own life. It's because they, they couldn't stop practicing racism, white supremacy. Um, um, fun, fun. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I thought, um, this part was uh, hilarious. Um, for some reason, just Robinson Crusoe just running towards him. Uh, Cause um, yeah, Robinson Crusoe, like racist people, they they are they are insane. Uh, this is a a madman. As as um, these two more refined white supremacists will call him later, um, as they will say. And uh, someone uh, I think it was Ash mentioned to me um, that um, Robert Crusoe was was was, was niggerized because um, they 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 no longer see him as a. Um, as a gentleman like like themselves, but a person who has been made mad due to living in on uh, living in the wild. And um it's so funny when um Robinson Crusoe kills um actually let me just let me just play play this out. When I say James, do not shut us can't we talk this over? Like civilized human beings. See, racist man, Robinson Crusoe understands racism so well because he knows that um, civilization is, is, is not um, what it's chalked up to be. He knows civilization is, is uh, power and, and control. And um, that this racist suspect here who just got shot was just going to um, find a way to um, deceive. Crusoe and Friday once they got the opportunity to do so. So he knows that it's better for this for this um, suspected racist to be dead than to be given any more chances um, and to and to like 
further deceive or try to harm um, Crusoe or um, Friday. So uh, very telling, and uh, and um, of course, it's always constructive to see a um, black male kill a racist even if it's saving a um, suspected race, I mean, a white supremacist like Crusoe, and it, even if it's using a, a primitive object like a spear. Um, but it just goes to show the racism. The Yurugu, you know, Crusoe uses the gun, advanced technology. And Friday, the savage, the primitive one uses a spear. It's very interesting. I have a uh, number of comments. I'll, I'll, I'll um, see if other folks have comments to share, or we could get into closing comments. I thought it was interesting as far as imagery. Um, if you look at the cover of Man Friday, you'll see that the white guy's face is like slightly over the um, Friday's face, like he's overpowering him. Um, and just the term man Friday, man, when you think of man, you think of the man, you think of white man, white men. So um, uh, reading the race code war book uh, definitely broke that down, like explains the whole term man and how it's associated with white man. And um, yeah, oh, and if you watch the, Robeson Cuso movie, it kind of explains a little bit of what's going on in Man Friday. And <laughs> it's the worst movie. And um, the, oh, how do I even explain it? Friday, man, yeah, Friday in the Robeson, Robeson Cuso movie is actually a white guy with black paint, black face, but his whole body is done up. So, mm, yeah. I think there's, I don't, I mean, even if the sphere is, I guess you could call it primitive, but if you're in that type of situation, like in terms of its usefulness over time, like the spear is going to last you longer than the gun because the gun only has but a few bullets. So I think it represents that like the technology that Europeans use is like, it's not reusable, it's like finite. And it's always based on them kind of exploiting natural resources that are finite. So I think it makes more sense if Friday uses the spear because the spear is the weapon that is, I, I don't know, like it, it just, I feel like I would rather have a spear because you only have but a few bullets. At some point, you the gun is not going to be useful. Any more comments, questions about the film? Excellent observation, Ms. Johnson. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, I believe she said her name is Ash. Um, I saw that the the white man always had to appear godlike, and I'm saying that because um, it went to a scene where he was grooming himself in the mirror, and then Friday rang the bell. And then he went to his desk and started writing as if he was in there doing something constructive. So, yeah, he, he always had to appear, you know, in, a, in an authoritative manner in front of Friday. It's interesting. Uh, when the other two white supremacists came back to his, um, his little man-made fort, he had said that you can't be too careful and then he had said uh, with savages and Spaniards and I'm wondering if that time uh, well in that time period uh, when he uh, made the comment about the Spaniards do they still have 
a sufficient amount of Moors within, you know, Spanish armadas. I was wondering if that's what he uh, meant by that. Um, when Friday was looking out at the ships loading the non-white people uh, on there, he still looked at Robinson Crusoe, even dealing with um, directly uh, with racism, white supremacy from him, he still looked at him like a white savior. Uh, that was interesting. And um, I guess Robinson Crusoe was attempting to teach Friday and he said that Latin was spoken by Romans. And it just made me think, which I've never received the answer to this question, why are a portion of non-white, non-black people referred to as Latinos if this was a language spoken by Romans? Um, let's see. Oh, yes, that long diatribe that he went on after he uh, bound Friday to that tree was one big Welsing moment. And after that, immediately after that, the parrot says, I love you, and then he kills the parrot. And it reminds me of when the code says that you cannot have love without justice. So I love you, and then you're shot dead. Afterwards, when Friday got the gun, it made me think that that's every white man's fear. A black man set on justice with a loaded gun in his face. and we all could visibly see the fear in his eyes. Um, it's interesting, even at the end of the movie, they still call him Friday. You know, his, his real name was never revealed. The name of the tribe was never revealed. So that makes me think uh, this can be any one Black person or all Black people. Um, they didn't really mention the white protagonist's name, uh, but a few times in that movie. So that could be one white person or all white people. We should look at it like that. Well, just a suggestion. Uh, yeah, indeed, he was a plague amongst children. And I didn't like the way, even in acting, how he was rubbing on that non-white child, you know? I think he did. Uh, that's all I have for now. Do you think if he still had his bird that he would kill himself? if he only had it burned oh, with him? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, probably so. But I, I did have something in my notes uh, speaking about that. Um, just in case um, any victim hears this in the future and may be confused on that. Um, can't find what I had in my notes. But uh, there are plenty of white males who live in solitude and don't kill themselves. This white male in this movie, he killed himself because he couldn't practice racism, white supremacy the way that he wanted to. So his, he didn't feel his life was worth living. But um, yeah, I, I think he probably would have done something uh, monstrous to their period regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very um, telling that love does not exist in a system of white supremacy. Um, uh, because oh, yeah, the, the oh, parent scene, oh. go ahead. Oh, um, just one more thing. Um, if anyone is wondering what would have happened if they would have let that white man stay amongst the tribe, and I'm going to put this in the WhatsApp group, just look up Peter Gerard Scully. And he's an Australian man who's in prison for life in the Philippines after being convicted of one count of human trafficking and five counts of rape by sexual assault of underage girls. He is pending trial for other crimes against children, including the production of production and dissemination of child pornography, torture, and the alleged murder of an 11-year-old girl. He's said to have had uh, 75 victims in the Philippines. And it's interesting, the system of racism, white supremacy is a global system. Now, the Philippines will give uh, drug dealers the death sentence and actually carry those out. But this white man imprisoned in the Philippines, over 75 victims. 
you know, including, you know, torture, murder, young children, young children from the Philippines, and he's serving life. Interesting. <clears throat> but that's all I have. So I'll um, bet what would have been the future for that tribe if Robinson Crusoe would have stayed there. I'll mute my line. I suspect you are very, very, very correct. And then thanks for um, the other really interesting, interesting insight um, that has been um, shared this discussion. I am um, very uh, interesting to actually think about the reality that uh, Latin, Latin Americans or whatever confusing label they are um, called stems back all the way into like the uh, Roman days. And cause I, I never put two and two together that um, Latin was spoken was such an ancient um, language and uh, it has been um, kind of altered, but, and um, this is really interesting. Thanks. Cause I definitely have- So is it basically, since Spanish is the biggest second language, is that purposely the purpose kind of because Latin's been around that long and it hasn't been carried it seemed like Latin if it's not English it's Spanish but they say that Spanish is one of the Latin languages yeah so I feel like that's basically on purpose because I know in my parents country our language is Garifuna, but now only 6.9% of those people out there only speak Garifuna. The majority of the language is now Spanish. So I feel like it's a purpose for why it's that way. Assimilation. You know, this is it seems as if uh, the white supremacists appear to give their victims a choice, you know, Pepsi or Coke, Republican or Democrat, you know, but at the end of the day, the goal is still white supremacy. So they speak Spanish because that's who won there. They speak French wherever they speak French because that's who won. We speak English because that's who won where we're at. It's all still white supremacy. Yep, indeed. Yeah, I agree with exactly what, what Ray said, especially it's like, it's just like how you go to Africa and there's one country where majority of people speak English, another country where they speak French, another country where they speak Portuguese. It's literally just a map of what white country conquered that area and made it a country and colonized it. And, I, and it's just like the Spanish just went all throughout so Southern America and like Central America. Yeah, almost at a fine line, you know, the Spanish stops and then the Portuguese pick up. So, yeah. All righty, should we get into um, closing comments? Uh, I'll begin. Yeah. Um, Man Friday, a uh, very uh, constructive movie is if a person is wanting to um, a display of racism and white supremacy, uh, what it is and how it works. And also a, a well made film as well. Definitely um, I'll give it I'll give it a nine, nine out of ten. Um, very, very uh, enjoyable if you are aware of what you're looking at. Um, Yeah, that, I'll leave it at that. Um. It was a great movie, very codifying. Um, if you know the code and you're studying reading, it's a 
great eye opener and great examination of things that we see now that we experience now. Uh, a good overall movie. I did forget to mention this. I, um, so Mad Friday is like some sort of concept that white people will, so it, this is a concept, I believe, that embedded in their um, psyche and their lore and their um, traditions, because here we have um, Mickey's Mad Friday, which is, which is kind of like the same thing, you know, he's gonna get lost out in sea, he's gonna have to contend with all the um, cannibalistic savages and, um, so he's gonna go around and and, and um, save that one. So yeah, so this is a concept, you know. This is some something that white people have in their um, their culture. Because um, as we can see, this movie has this movie has been made so many times. There's even a German um, Robinson Crusoe film out there. So I just forgot to mention this. Had to mention it really quickly. Does anyone know when Rob, when Robinson Crusoe came out? Like the book? Oh, 719. That's interesting. I have a book. Yeah, it's like a really popular book that people read in like high school and college. In grade school. It, it's like, yeah, it's really, really popular. Oh, when did you say the, when did you say the book was written, Ash? It was written in 1719. Mm, yeah. I'm just interested in like the um because it's obviously like the book is obviously a tool of propaganda. So I'm wondering like what what it served in that immediate year or around that year. And it's crazy because I've seen that Mickey Mouse kind of video and I've never, and I didn't know anything, I didn't know much about Robinson Crusoe, but you can see that it's, it's completely the book or movie or whatever character. So I wonder how many more things are based on it. Not only that, there's a 2009 um, live action film, um, I mean, live action television show called Crusoe. Has about, I think, 14 episodes, 12 episodes. Uh, may, maybe something to, 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 to check out as well. But yeah, the, the story has been a retold and regurgitated and glorified so, so much that um, I know why. It's a white, it's a white. Um, person's fantasy to be on an island and just an uh, island full of slaves, uh, people they have total control over it to do whatever they want with. And, uh, it's really um, sick. The sickness mentioned in Mad Friday. I digress. Closing comments. I'll go. I really enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, it's just, I just I learned a lot from it, and it was really great watching it after reading a lot of the stuff I read because I felt like I could every there was like every scene that represented like something that I read, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and I thought it was a really good discussion. white people have definitely shown that they do not intend to stop practicing white supremacy. Uh, uh, things such as Robinson Crusoe, Moby Dick, King Kong, you know, these people know what they're doing. They know that they have to keep constantly churning out uh, subconscious things to interact with one another and keep each other on code. So, uh, very constructive discussion. Uh, I think it is very constructive.
constructive that our discussion uh, has gone past uh, the duration of the movie itself. So uh, a critical mass of non-white people should be looking at everything that they do and everything that they see with that uh, attempted counter racist lens. So I Hundred percent agree. Thank you. Where you want flash your old Miss Ash, Miss Johnson? I know Kwaku and Anya do not have a closing, but do you have one, Miss B? Going once. All righty. Well, thanks again, everyone, for this really uh, constructive business meeting. Um, we'll be doing it again. We'll be doing it again soon.